Around 1939, a family moved from Lamar, Mississippi on Hamilton Street in Orange Mound. Now, every child that grows up in Orange Mound should know that a Mary Rose graduate who lived on Hamilton Street went on to influence the world. It was Willie Mitchell, a Mary Rose graduate, who helped create what is now known as the Memphis Sound. White people worldwide honor Willie Mitchell. However, in Orange Mound, there is no museum. They don't tell the story. All that you hear about Orange Mound is that they have made Orange Mound to be Ghetto America USA and this is white supremacy and racism that the great and rich Orange Mound history is never told or talked about. I was drinking a beer at the table and I had my back to the bandstand. So these kids started singing and I turned around and I said, when it was over, I said, Jimmy, tell, tell the kid to come over here. So he came over. I said, what you say your name? He said, Al Green. I said, man, you got a beautiful voice. I said, you can cut a hit record. I said, why don't you go back to Memphis with me? And uh, if we work real hard, I said, we can cut some hit records. This is a raw recording studio where all the records were made for high records. This is, uh, I guess you would call it, a historic place. The ceiling is much, uh, it's not as tall here as it is, as it goes back, it goes up. And I think it gives the studio a unique sound. And we probably stand in the same area that Al used to record. He liked to stand right here. That's why you like in one spot, <laughs> the same spot all the time. This particular mic here is a mic that Al Green has used all his life in here. He called it his mic. I keep it here all the time. It's mic number nine. He always loved to sing on this mic. That's where he made all his records on. The style came up because Al was singing. He was really singing hard. And I used to tell Al, you need to soften up some. I said, you, you, you. He said, but I, you know, I want to sound like a, I said, Al, you, you got a good falsetto. You need to settle this music down. So at that time, I, all my life I've tampered in jazz chords and everything. So I began to write some jazz chords and, and uh, try to get an, another sound for it. So finally one Saturday afternoon I was tamping around the piano and I came up with this melody of Let's Stay Together. And I said, this could be something. So I kept messing with Al was in England and so when Al came back, we went in the studio and I played it for him on the piano and at this time Al Jackson was just sitting down playing drums with his hands, just imagining what it, what it would be like. So when Al came in, Al said, well, I said, give me five minutes and I'll write some words to it. So Al walked around and said, about 15 minutes later he came back with some words and we started messing with this song. So about a week later, we put the track down. And that's where the, everything happened. We were over here in the ghetto area, and there's a bunch of winos out there, and they were all out there drinking and what have. So I said, why don't you go and get four or five gallons of wine? Let's bring these people in the studio. So we brought about 50 people in here. And all the winos, they were drinking wine, laying on the floor, we were cutting the record. And we'd all tell them to be quiet. And if you notice on the Let's Stay Together album, you hear a lot of noise in the background, but it's the wine. <laughs> then to know that uh, Reverend Al Green was here. <laughs> I... <laughs> so in love with you. Those guys didn't think I would do it. 